Hello and welcome back to Not Overthinking. Tamo, how are you doing today? I'm not doing too badly. It's uh, it's about 9pm over here in St. Albans where we are today. I've had, I've had a bunch of calls today. Uh, but yeah, on the whole, not doing too bad. How about you? Pretty good. I had some bad news this morning. Oh yeah? Because I did a DEXA scan. I did my like fifth or sixth DEXA scan this morning. Okay, this is where they like scan your whole body in like super detail. Yeah, they scan your body and they show you how much muscle you've gained or lost and how much fat you've gained or lost since the last time you did a scan. Yeah. And give you like your body fat percentage and the whole shebang. Yeah. How was it? It was bad. What did they say? They showed that I've lost 1.5 kg overall. Okay, since three months ago. Since three months ago. Right. But actually I lost 2 kg of muscle and gained 500 grams of fat. Mate. This is despite going to the gym roughly two to three times a week with a personal trainer and being careful to... You know, I've been getting like these meal delivery things at like 500 yeah, calories, healthy, 50 man. grams. I've been getting like, yeah. been getting like 17,000 steps a day. But I realized that I've been on a calorie deficit, which is why I've lost weight because of all the walking I've been doing mm. and all the healthy eating. But I haven't been having nearly high enough training volume and enough protein to spare the muscle or sort of retain the muscle while you, while right, you lose okay. the fat. That's what I suspect. So, so what's the deal with the walking? What's your walking regime at the moment and why have you become walking pilled? I became walking pilled because I, um, I knew that I want to get my visceral adipose tissue down. That's the, right, uh, right. What the hell is that? Mean? Okay. Basically. Right. So there's body fat, right? Yeah. And if someone looks at me or someone looks at you, they wouldn't yeah. say that we're fat. Yeah. But if you and I do a DEXA scan, because we are brown, yeah. we have decent chunks of fat that collect in our, like around Belly. our abdominal organs. Yeah. That's called visceral abdominal, uh, ad visceral adipose tissue or VAT. Okay. And your VAT is the thing that really correlates with all the cardiovascular complications and like risk of all the bad, like diabetes and Alzheimer's and all, yeah, like yeah. all of the bad things. Yeah. Uh, and so really that's a number you want to get as close to, as close to zero as possible. Yeah. Now my figure for the visceral adipose tissue is sort of in the sort of 60th percentile. So, so I am fatter than average in terms of my visceral adipose tissue average for, my, of people for who, my age group. Who do bit DEXA scans. Average for people who do, who do DEXA scans. <laughs> which is like <laughs> probably very like... Which is a more athletic population. population, but like any any amount of visceral adipose tissue is yeah, not good yeah, for you. Sure. And so getting that number down, especially given our granddad died of a heart attack age 40 something. Yeah. It's like, I think I've been, I've been doing a bit of a deep dive into all the longevity stuff yeah. and basically figured out that prob probably the thing that will kill me and you first is cardiovascular stuff. You think so? I mean, it's not like sure. What sure, else sure, yeah. yeah. Um, I think thing number two on that list is going to be um, lack of like stability or core or like leg muscles for like like postural stability and stuff. I.e., we're going to have when we're older, we're going to have a fall and break knee or break a hip. Really, and then that usually leads to a catastrophic decline in most people. Okay. Um, so those are like two. So two how does ones. so where does walking come in? Like. Yeah, you're presumably not burning much calories doing walking, or like if you are, you could burn it much more efficiently by doing running, for example. So the thing with walking is that uh, walking actually does burn a, you know, it burns a reasonable number of calories. But I mean, it's really nothing compared, like ten times less per hour than like the running. The thing with walking though is that walking doesn't tire you out. You can basically walk unlimited in the daytime. When you run, it tires you out. How can uh, you? It, no, no, mate, how can you walk unlimited? I mean, you've you got stuff to do. You can basically walk all day. Uh, uh, sure. Assume, <laughs> assume, assuming you didn't have stuff to do, you could walk yeah, all day. Okay, but yeah, you can't agreed. run all day, for example. So you actually have yeah. a way higher tolerance for being able to walk than you do for being able to run. Okay. Walking is also good because, in my case, I can take walking meetings. So I switched basically all my Zoom calls to being walking meetings because mm -hmm. I'm the boss and I can do what I want, kind of thing. Okay. And I very rarely have calls with external people, and you know, sometimes yeah. okay, if I do, I'll go on the laptop. You know that. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Um, me and my friend Pablo, our friend Pablo, are also developing software called VoicePal, which yeah. is now in nearly ready for public release. Mm -hmm. Where I just go on a walk. I, it's it's kind of like having a a ghostwriter in your pocket is how some mm -hmm. of our users describe it. So we've kind of gone with that tagline. Okay. Uh, where you just have the AirPods in, you hit record, and you can just talk about whatever you want, any kind of stream of consciousness. Yeah. And it will figure out what you're what you're talking about. It will clean everything up, and crucially, it will ask you follow up questions. Nice. So I might start off a recording being like, okay, you know, I want to plan this YouTube video where I'm talking about loneliness or whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. And I'll say some stuff and then I'll stop recording. It'll analyze it. It'll ask me follow-up questions. And then I can then with one click turn that into a YouTube video script or a newsletter or okay. whatever. And so I've been using that as a, it's, it sort of takes my writing away from my desk. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Which means that like I can just go on a walk through Regent's Park in the morning for like an hour. But you're actually like getting a stuff ton done. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing so much stuff. It's that's so sick. That sounds epic. I dude. love the walking thing. Walking is also in theory muscle sparing. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos about this. So there are certain like walking, walking uses all the, like the big muscles of your bodies, like your glutes and your quads and, and stuff. In theory, 
um, if so, so for example, if you just simply didn't eat, uh, if you if you got yourself into a calor caloric deficit by just eating fewer calories, yeah, um, you start to lose muscle. You start to lose muscle. Okay, uh, you still lose muscle anyway when you're on a on a calorie deficit, but you want to yeah. do things that use the muscle, so the body thinks, oh, okay. we don't want to get rid of this muscle. Okay. Walking in theory retains muscle, but in my case, it really did not because I think I wasn't too much of a caloric deficit, and also just didn't have enough protein and enough training volume in general. Okay, I watched so a lot of you, YouTube videos from like doctors and stuff explaining like walking is incredible, but actually walking still. You know, so if you didn't, if you could, you know, for someone who can't do like Zoom meetings while walking and doesn't primarily like talk into their phone as the as like the work they do or something, a treadmill you know, desk is another one. Okay, but like, why shouldn't someone just run for half an hour, get it out of the way? It probably, but running for half an hour probably burns more calories than like two hours of walking, right? Probably even more. Um, no, I think it's just it's only about twice as many. Really? Yeah. But it's so much more intense. Uh, yeah. How does but, that work? Uh, because I think it's, 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 it's more intense because it's more like cardiovascularly intense. Like, d but don't, when did, don't when, quote me on that. When do calories get burned? How many more calories <laughs> burn while running than walking? Uh, running burns more than, more than twice as many. A person weighs 160 pounds. Walking at a pace of 3.5 miles per hour burns around 156 calories. Running at six miles per hour for the same time burns about 356 calories. So just over twice as many calories burned if you run rather than walk. The thing with running is that like, yes, you could just go for a run yeah. and you can get in your steps that way, all of that kind of stuff. You can use running as a calorie burn. Yeah, It's just that you then it, it then has to become a slot of exercise. Mm. You can't do other things while running. Yeah. Whereas while walking, you can do the writing with voice pal, you can take yeah. calls, you can, you can kind of do whatever, your mind can wander. You, you can, yeah, yeah. Also, a, a treadmill desk is really good. Everyone does vouch for walking. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people are like, you know, walking is a game changer. Yeah, man, that's actually sick. And like waking up, going for a walk first thing in the morning for an hour just, you know, clears the mind. Yeah, that's Rather so than good. sitting yeah. on the toilet and scrolling Instagram. Reels. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, first I do that and then I go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I take my 50 gram protein shake with me, try and get the protein in, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I got the results I mean, of the DEXA great. scan and I realized that, you know what, I need to take. But what's your goal? I mean, because you're in great shape, man. Like, Thanks, you're, man. You're, you're like, you know, you're pretty buff. Yeah, I thought so as well. But then this DEXA scan didn't but show. But what's like, the I'm, issue? I'm, I'm, a, like, bit, I'm a bit you... suspicious about the results of this, of this scan. In why, why are you fussed about that? If you're like, you know, you're doing your walking, you're eating healthy, you're, you're like, you look good. I'm fussed about that because if, we're, uh, if we're trying to... If we're trying to be healthy, generally less fat and more muscle is, is yeah. a good thing sure, for, sure, for sure. all of the things. Yeah. Obviously, like fat levels that are way off the scales low is really bad. Yeah. But like most people are not going to get to that point. Yeah. Muscle that's like way off the scales high is also bad. But like generally, most people are uh, over fattened and under muscled. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah. so I want to correct that balance. And what's annoying is that I've been doing things thinking I'm correcting that balance. Yeah. But then the DEXA scan, theory, in theory, in theory mm. the numbers don't lie. And so yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. It's kind of nice to have that gauge to be like, okay, I need to make a correction. Hmm. I need to do something differently. That's crazy. So that's dude. The bad news I had this morning. Wow, I've and done basically no exercise in like two months. I think. Mate, I, and, I had and, a good... your, and your body composition is probably <laughs> probably the same as what I have because I've been doing Dexter scans for the last two years now, so I can see like the graph of all yeah. my things. And I've basically in two years, I've lost like, I've I've lost two kgs net. Of which one kg was fat and one kg was muscle. How wait, what? In two years? In two of years, all your grinding. Yeah, all my grinding. This is the thing that's annoying. Wait, it's sort wait, of like wait, one what? step forward, one step back. Yeah, but you've made a lot of gains, right? Like you weren't that you weren't that muscly two years ago. I was. I I just had lots of fat two years ago as well. Oh damn. Yeah, and that's why it's annoying. It's like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. And so I've been watching. I've been, I've been watching some getting, videos about it. Why am I going to bother now, mate? What? <laughs> I mean, I think if I think if I hadn't done anything, like for especially for people of our age, i.e., where you know I'm now thirty, you're nearly thirty. Yeah. Um, our genetics, like as as anyone ages, the mm. decline. There's always a decline. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of annoying that even though I've been grinding and like putting, but surely it's still going to have a gym, positive impact. Like, surely there's a, there's impact that isn't measurable in the DEXA scan. Yeah, my right? cardiovascular like health is probably probably way better. Like probably even if, mental if, health if even if you'd gone, if you'd like. Yeah. Even if you were like net zero after all of this, you're probably like surely you're in a better health c condition than like me who's net zero from not doing anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> right. You're probably also not not net zero. You've probably lost muscle and also yeah, that may. Yeah. I used to, so when we started the podcast, like shortly after we started the podcast in lockdown, like 2020, 2021 kind of era, I could do like 15 pull ups simultaneously. 15. Like, yeah. Oh wow. 15. I could like bash out 15 pull ups. Yeah. How many can you do now? 
I can do like three now. Dude. Oh damn, dude! It's absolutely ridiculous. Dude, you got to sort it out. What's going yeah. on? I've got a bit why of a you, belly. Why have, you, why have you let yourself go? <laughs> I've just really let myself go, man. Post marriage. <laughs> I feel like it's post marriage, but I mean, even even since we've been married like two years now, there have been phases. There have been periods where I'm like going to the gym regularly, but yeah, the last like six months have just not not been that. I had started to run to work for a bit. Um, it's like a two two k. It's like a ten minute run. Yeah, still a good way to start the day. Yeah, but mate, the thing about running is like, and that gives you up. And that well, it makes you, you sweat. You, no, no, I, so I don't actually sweat that much, and it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna clip that one <laughs> in case we need it twenty years from now. Hopefully, we won't need it. <laughs> It's not even worth explaining. <laughs> it's not. We're not going to go into it. Yeah, the sweat is an issue. It's it, the mental, the mental side is an issue. Where every morning when I'm meant to run to work, I'm like, oh no, and then I'll like procrastinate from it, and then I'll like try and come up with some reason why actually today I should, I, you know, it's fine for me not to run to work. Whereas if I was just like, if I was in the routine of walking to work, I'd wake up, I'd be like, sick. I've got a nice like. You know, 25 minute walk to work, half an hour walk to work, listen to some podcasts, maybe like grab a coffee for the walk. Like I'd be happy in the mornings doing the thing. I'd end up doing it every single day rather than like trying to weasel my way out of it. You know, it's the power of walking, man. Walking is like quite pleasant. Most people look yeah, forward walking to walking. Nice, yeah. I don't know. Well, some people look forward to running, but apparently you have to do it for like a month or two before you start yeah. to look forward to it. All right, man. Maybe I'll just stop. Maybe I need to just not to worry so much about the running and just do walking. Yeah. It's a good start. Also, yeah. I would recommend listening to the audiobook for Outlive by Peter Atia. Oh, yeah? It's really good. It's I absolutely just, sick. I, okay, here's the thing. I don't feel particularly motivated by this longevity stuff. I'm not thinking like, oh, man, I want to, you know, I need to like... Have you read Die With Zero? No. Okay. Like, okay, so, so, so tell me, well, like, what, do you, what's, what, what are your thoughts on the longevity stuff? I want to be healthy... But I don't, I just don't care about optimizing too much, you know, I want just want a generally healthy lifestyle or whatever. I'm not, I'm not like Brian Johnson and the like, you know, the don't die. I'm not like that guy. Sure. Right? So how, how healthy would you like to be? Like, let's say when you were 75, what would you like to be able to do? Everything, mate. <laughs> You'd like to be able to carry your own shopping bags. Yeah. You'd like to be able to go up and down the stairs. Yeah. You'd like to be able to kind of walk up, you know, trying to, uh, uh, you know, if you're sitting on the couch, to be able to lift yourself up without needing assistance. Yeah. Course. You'd like to be able to walk to the shops and back without yeah, yeah. needing a, a thingy bobby. Yeah. Um, you should read the book. Really? Uh, a Why? lot of, so uh, essentially from about the age of 60 onwards, it's literally impossible to gain muscle mass or something. So you just get, you, really? your muscle mass declines by about 1% every year or some stat like that. Again, don't okay. quote me on this, anyone. And so there's this concept called the Centenarian Olympics, <laughs> which is, I, I'm not sure if it's actually an actual thing or if it's sort of just how Sound, Peter Atiyah thinks about it. <laughs> okay. It's like at the age of 100, you want to be able to squat your own body weight like 10 times. You want to be able to sort of do a bit of a jog. You want to be able to walk a reasonable distance so that you can enjoy more at things At the age of 100? Yeah, for Who example. Who can squat their own body weight at the age of 100? I mean, some people can, like the Okinawa people and, you know, that can. Can they? Oh, sorry, squat, squat like... Uh, no, no, I know. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, think there's like, hundred years year olds who can do that. Me, absolutely, definitely. Not, there's all mate. the eight hundred percent. There were centenarians where are they? In, in in Okinawa, for example, and in really? these other kind of blue zones where there's people who live to hundred and seem to be in pretty decent shape. What? And they can go on a jog at hundred. Yeah, wow, there's a, there's a guy wild. who ran a marathon at hundred or something like. That. I mean, you hear these sorts of stories, but the point is, if you want to like, how many how many sort of people in their eighties do you know who can like lift up their grandkids and who can walk to the grocery store and back mm. without getting massively out of breath yeah. and who, who are not like frail, who, who's, whose life quality of life is not severely limited by their physical yeah. inability to do stuff. All right. It's that's like, a good that's point. the situation you want to try and avoid. Yeah. And the way you avoid that is by figuring out like, okay, cool. What are the things that are going to yeah. sort of go wrong for me? You also probably want to avoid a situation where when you're like 68, you fall, you break your hip and then you're bed bound. And now suddenly your quality of life takes a massive dip. Yeah. And at that point, if you have kids, maybe you've got grandkids, like you, you no longer have the energy to enjoy the time with the grandkids. You just want to sleep all day. Like there's all mm. these bad, all of these um, bad things that happen as we age. Mm. Um, he calls them the four horsemen, which I think is mm. cardiovascular stuff, metabolic stuff, i.e. diabetes, cognitive stuff, i.e. like Alzheimer's and dementia and mm. cancer. One of these things is probably going to get you. 
You ideally want these things to get you when you're really old, not when you're kind of old. Okay, yeah, and sure. That, and that does require, it doesn't require doing a Brian Johnson and like eating only mushrooms and <laughs> injecting things into different body parts and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it does generally require uh, appreciating that like, okay, the, these are the things that are going to happen. This is just the, the small things I should do every day mm. or the small things I should do every week. All right, fine. I'm sold. A lot of it involves exercise. Uh, no, I, exercise I'm, I'm sold. Okay, fine. So but walking is a good start. If you listen, just start, like, you're an audiobook guy. You've got time to listen to audiobooks when you're, like, do, doing things. Just, like, start listening to Outlive by Peter Atiyah. And How long is it? It's really long, but if you start listening to it, I promise you'll you'll get into it. If you don't get into it... Oh, look, okay, I'm, but I'm already sold. I don't need all the... I don't need to be, no, no, no. like, inspired by the book. It's not about being just inspired by the book. Okay, so this is something he also says in Chapter 3 of the book, which is what, what I was listening to in the gym this morning, uh, which is that most people at the point where they're sold, they want to jump to the tactics. Yeah. Like, just tell me what I have to do. Exactly. But they jump to the tactics without understanding the strategy. And as Sun Tzu, the author of The War of Art, famously said... Art of War. Art of War, not War of Art. <laughs> That's a press field. Yeah. Uh, Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War, famously said, I think it was something like, um, tactic, uh, strategy without tactics is a slow victory, but tactics without strategy is an, uh, is an inevitable defeat. Okay. You're trying to jump to the tactics without, without really understanding anything about the strategy. Right. Which means you just want to be told, like, all right, walk 10,000 yeah. steps a day, do yeah. this, make sure you do some zone 2 cardio. And you're not going to do any of it because you don't understand why you are trying to do the thing. So you think I, st I still need to have, be inspired a little bit? It's not about being inspired. It's, about, it's just about understanding what the point is and what the goal is. And when you figure out what your goal is personally, mm. like, do you want to be able to lift up your grandkid when you're 65? Or not? Mm. It's okay if you don't want to. Do you, would you like to be able to go for a walk without going out of breath at 65? Or not? Do you just want to sit around on the sofa all day? That's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know that kind of stuff would you yeah. like to wipe your, <laughs> wipe your own bum <laughs> when you're 75 would you like to get someone to do that for you <laughs> you know once you figure out what your goals are that you sounds kind of, right <laughs> you can kind of work back from that and you can figure out okay therefore what is the what are the things I should be doing right now okay fine let me get this book Outlive Outlive it's got an audible it's uh, kind of annoying to read on Kindle but you'd like it on audible Outlive um I say all this having been into this stuff for a, for a few years and not really making any progress through the DEXA scan, but it's not it's for lack sure, of trying. But why would the DEX? Why do you think the DEXA scan is? Like, I mean, the DEXA scan is just one 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 possible measurement. I do think it feels like there's a lot more. Yeah, you know, there's a lot more going on, but you know, gaining more muscle and losing yeah, sure. and losing fat generally reasonable aims. So I've got a new plan that I'm going to follow, but. Yeah. Okay, I bought it with an Audible credit. Very good. All right. Okay, so that was your bad morning. That was my bad morning. Wow. Yeah. That's rough, dude. I had another, but I, 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 I had two bad things happen today. One was, first thing in the morning, well, at 10 o'clock I had a DEXA scan. Mm. Straight after that, I had a dental hygienist appointment. Mm. Um, uh, last time I saw the dental hygienist was about a year ago. Apparently, I have mild gingivitis, which is what does that mean? gum disease. Really? Yeah. Why? Because my Invisalign retainers that I have permanently yeah. build up plaque. And apparently, it's really hard to clean those with a floss. And also, my teeth are too close together for a floss to go in through the retainers. And so, plaque builds up in the gums. So, you've got and gum so disease. I, and so, I had mild, mild gingivitis. So, what happened? Like plaque build up. I mean, she was just saying that, look, either you should floss, which we, we tried, but it, I can't do because of my teeth. Was that on Peter Atia's list? Flossing. Mm. No, dying of gingivitis, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the thing that kills you, but it's <laughs> okay. kind of annoying. It makes your breath smelly. Oh, um, really? But now I just need to go to the dental hygienist once a quarter. At least that's what she told me. <laughs> Ups once upselling me on the, <laughs> the, the, the quarterly subscription. Wow, okay. I mean, I, I, I should... Yeah, mate, this is what happens when you turn 30. You suddenly, like, everything starts to go. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I need some exercise back in my life. I've been in, I've been in a bit of a funk recently where, like... I'm wasting a lot of time. I'm like not getting, to, not getting to bed on time, then waking up a bit later than I want, and then you know, I hadn't been in that kind of phase for a while actually. But in the last few weeks, I've kind of like, yeah, fallen into that phase. What do you think that might be? I think one thing is so actually so this week so Lucia's away for a week, she's traveling, and when she's away, I tend to like. It's much easier for me to just like be a more of a waste man. So like if it's like 10 p.m. and she's home and she's starting to get ready for bed, then then it's like, OK, cool. Yeah, let's get ready for bed. And then I'll, I'll like be in bed by like half 10 or something. 
maybe we'll watch some A, maybe we'll just chat, I'll do some reading, then I'll be like sleeping by 11 or something or shortly after 11. And then I can wake up, I can wake up the next day and and it's all good. But when she's not there, then I'm like, I'm like on the sofa, like lying down, probably on my laptop, my phone. It's like 10 p.m. I'm like, hmm, hmm I could just stay here a bit longer, <laughs> you know, and then like just end up wasting time on the internet, <laughs> just doing like random stuff and then getting to bed late. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, mate. It's a hard life. Sort it out. Gonna sort it out. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are your action points? Um, well, she's back She's back in on the weekend. Okay, but what are your action, <laughs> <laughs> but what are your action points in general? <laughs> I think for me, the like, the, the regular sleeping and waking up is like very important. Mm. If I do that, because there was a period like when I was doing, when I was like getting up to seven, you know, I've got my like half an hour of morning poo and all this kind of stuff. But like I would do like a, like a pull-ups workout. I would like read some Quran. I'd like sort out the ha- like do stuff around the house. Like, and then I'd be like ready to go to like run to work at like 10 to nine, you know? So that like I had a, I had a solid routine of doing that. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think I've just got to make sure I'm, I'm getting up at seven. And if even if I haven't gotten enough sleep, you still just get up at that time and then it'll, it'll just force you to sleep early the next day, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good hack. How do you force yourself? How will you force yourself to get up at seven? <clears throat> I don't know, mate. I think I, maybe I need to I need to not have my phone by my bedside. Mm. I thought yeah. I was past all this, man. I was grappling with this kind of crap in like 2020. And then I, I, thought, I, I thought I was past it. Mate. It's never ending. You just constantly have to be fighting. <laughs> there's, a, there's a story of the Kung Fu master and he's like drilling, drilling the fundamentals. And one of the students asks, master, but you're, so, you know, you're a Kung Fu master. Why are you doing the basic things? Yeah. And he says something profound about like if the, fundamentals are, the fundamentals are always the fundamentals. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's a, a better way of phrasing that. But yeah. Fundamentals, man, not having the phone by the bedside, setting the bedtime, bedside, bedtime alarm on your phone. That reminds you when to wind down. Do you use Opal? What the hell is mate, Opal? Opal bro? is sick. You need to download Opal. Download what Opal right it? now. O-P-A-L. I don't think I need more apps, mate. <laughs> mate, it's an app blocking app. Oh, God. I recently connected with the CEO. It's, it's actually really good. And it's one of those app blocking apps. Is actually... this a sponsored segment? No. <laughs> but I think we, we are reaching out to them to try and get them to sponsor some stuff. It's an app blocking app that's hard to get around. Like it's, I've done I, that. I've, I've had ad blocking apps before, app blocking apps before, mate. Okay. So why don't you have this one now? So, for example, for me, I have it so that after ten between ten p.m. and nine a.m., it blocks YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and Reddit. How does it block it? How much does it block it? Uh, it has different different difficulty settings. So the medium difficulty setting is like it blocks it, but you can always like snooze it. So you go on the you go on Opal. You have to wait five seconds, and then you can snooze the block and undo the block. It has a hard oh. mode, which it just blocks it and does not let you snooze it. And even if you uninstall the app. It somehow keeps it blocked. Because really, it works on sort of on the operating system level. That's epic. Okay, yeah, fine. So it's sick. I was finding that like at night time, I I've I've been using this for the last few months because I found that I was just watching YouTube videos until until super late night. What videos? I don't know YouTube videos. <laughs> um, and then I used Opal to block the YouTube videos, and I was suddenly getting loads. Of, I was suddenly getting really good sleep. And then one day, you know, I, I think at the, a couple of months ago we decided we were going to try and grow an Instagram. And mm. so I thought, you know what, let me <laughs> let me unblock Instagram because you know it's, it's important. Like, yeah, you know, when I'm reading my readwise got, highlights, I yeah. want to be able to share stuff with the Instagram story yeah, and not telling the arena. I got to be getting it. exactly. And then sort of, I had sleep scores of eighty two percent on Whoop the day I unblocked Instagram. Suddenly sixty two percent, fifty one percent, fifty eight percent, sixty three percent, and I'm just scrolling days. freaking Instagram reels. Yeah, I thought I was over all this stuff. Yeah. But there's something magical about Mate. just getting an app blocker that's actually good <laughs> to stop just, monkey just one mind. More app. Just one more app, bro. I promise. To stop monkey mind one from doing more the app thing. Is all it takes. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't think I would have to put Reddit on the list because I don't normally go on Reddit. But then once Instagram and Twitter and YouTube were blocked, I was like, okay, let's go on Reddit. <laughs> and then after like two hours of scrolling on Reddit, I was like, oh god, okay, let's add Reddit to the list. Um, it also does have an adult website blocking feature, which blocks incognito on your on your brow- on all your browsers oh, as really? well. Oh really? Wow. Uh, if that's relevant for anyone. That's very good to know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess I've got You're getting so many, so many recommendations. That's wild. You should pay for the premium version because obviously, I don't even know what the premium version does, but like... It improves my sleep score apparently. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah, so that's that's one update from me. Ah, oh, mate, one thing we haven't talked about 
got a huge thing in my life recently. Got a fish tank. I can't believe I totally oh, forgot. Man. We haven't actually done a pod since I got the fish tank. You've got a fish tank. Yeah, we haven't done a pod in a long time. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we intend to. Yeah. So, um, so I got a fish tank. Um, I don't know if we can. Well, if we're putting this on YouTube, maybe we can just put a picture in. Uh, it's too much effort. Too much effort. Yeah, unless, unless, unless you want to edit the YouTube video. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's like, as soon as you said that, I was like, no. Nope, right. If happen. you follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn, actually, I do some posts on there. Yeah. If you follow me on Twitter, I do post like little videos of my fish tank on there. But yeah, basically, as a, as a kid, I was um, I was always into fish keeping. This was sparked by getting sea monkeys as a gift when I was like eight or something. Mm. Um, anyway, I've had various fish tanks growing up and I loved it. It was sick. I've I just like always been into this stuff. And then basically post uni, yeah, basically since I went to uni, you know, we kind of moved house, we dismantled the fish tank. I've, you know, I've been like moving around and this kind of stuff. And so then I haven't had a fish tank and I'd, I'd been waiting for, you know, a bit of like location stability, um, to set up my fish tank. And a few months ago, Lucia, well, for my birthday last year, Lucia said she'd get me like this, you know, my, my dream fish tank set up. Um, and, you know, then we were moving flat and stuff like this. Anyway, so in April, it actually arrived. April 2024. April 2024. Nice. Yeah. Um, and so now I've got this this fish tank in, in the living room next to the sofa. I've got some fish in there. I've got some shrimp. I've got loads of plants. And it's just such a joy, mate. It's such an absolute joy. Like the highlight of my week is if I have a few, a few, a few spare hours on a Sunday or like a whole, you know, dare I say even a whole half day on a Sunday, best, best part of my week is doing maintenance on the fish tank. Why? Why? What do you enjoy about it? You plug. And why, and what, how is it any different to cleaning the house? Why is cleaning that? Like, yeah, to me, maintenance on a fish tank sounds kind of like cleaning the house, i.e. it's got to be done. It's kind of annoying. It's not my idea of a good time. Um, I think the thing about cleaning the house is the, di the difference between the house and the fish tank is that the fish tank is kind of like this living uh, ecosystem. Mm. And so every day, like there's new stuff going on. Every time you're doing maintenance, there's new stuff going on. You know, you got to like see, okay, do I have like random bits of algae growing there? Let me sort those out. It's kind of, it's a bit more like gardening, which I think most people just find a bit more therapeutic. I think the connection to nature, mm. I think it's, it is a bit more, um, you know, you're kind of like, uh, it's, it's more like, cleaning and a bit of interior design sort of thing you know okay, you're like yeah. trim, trimming some of the plants you're like seeing how the animals are doing you're changing some of the water what <laughs> i'm just thinking tri uh, trimming Trim the tree, the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so it's just i mean and it's just such a joy to watch like i can i can waste like an hour just like watching the fish tank when i'm supposed to be doing other things hmm. and it's like right next to the sofa as well so yeah it's just like such a such a source of joy in my life um, so yeah, I'm, I'm loving that at the moment. Is it, is the fact that it's your fish tank, one of the contributors to why it's such a, such a short source of joy, or would you be mesmerized watching any fish tank for an hour? I could probably watch a lot of fish tank. Like I, I, as a baseline, I, you know, I, I can watch fish tanks, but like when it's your own one, it's also like, you're not just, you're not watching it as a, as a passive observer. You're watching it as a. As, as the architect, you know, mm. you're watching it and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I should do a bit of like remodeling in that corner. Yeah. Or like, hmm, maybe I need to do some trimming over there. Or like, oh, how is, how is that fish getting on? Is know? it, is it sort of like playing SimCity, you know, that kind of vibe yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. architecting this ecosystem, yeah. but you're doing it IRL. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It sounds pretty fun. Yeah. I love it, mate. It's epic. So yeah, I've been really enjoying that. Who, uh, if someone's listening to this or watching this yeah. and they're intrigued, uh, what's a good way to dip one's proverbial toes into fish tanks yeah there's a there's a youtube channel called green aqua it's basically like a okay so look there's i won't spend too much time on this but within so fish keeping in general there's like different um traditions and uh and the tradition i f i am, am following is often known as aquas aquascaping or planted tanks you know you, you if you google for either of these terms and basically, it's fresh water rather than salt water. So that's one, that's one important thing about it. And then it's a lot of the focus is actually on the plants rather than the fish. The focus is on having like really nice plants um, and then fish as well. But like kind of this whole uh, sort of community, this whole like ecosystem. It's not like, you know, you get like a tank, you have some like gravel in there, 
you get your like princess castle, plastic princess castle thing, <laughs> you know, and then you plop some fish. Yeah, it's not like that. It's like, you know, it's like a, a slice of nature in your living room. Um, and it's a lot of focus on plants. So yeah, if, you, if you're intrigued, just like YouTube for like aquascaping or planted tanks, um, and you'll see like how stunning this stuff can be and you don't want one in your living room. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What else should we talk about? Well, I think one thing is, so I think we, it's been quite a few years since we've been doing the pod. Yeah. And I think I've, I've changed my views on like actually quite a lot of things <gasps> since, since okay. we started doing the pod. Yeah. And I was, I was catching up with my friend Mac, who's been a guest on the pod. Oh yeah. Recently. He, uh, he came over yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. Um, and I don't know how we came onto this, but one, one of the big things that I've sort of changed my mind on. It's the value of a kitchen bin. No, no, I'm not going to change on that one. I think I basically understand why people care about politics now. And I oh, think, interesting. Okay. Tell me more. Yeah. So look, I think at university and probably even on this pod, you know, I would have been you know, this, the smart ass who'd be like, oh my God, guys, you're so stupid. You're so stupid. Like, why do you watch the news, man? Like, it's it's such a waste of time. Like, you can't, con- you know, you, you can't control any of this stuff going on in the world, man. Like, you're just wasting your time. I'm, I'm enlightened over here in my little corner, just like concerning myself with, you know, just my little sphere of influence. And like, you know, I'm just doing my thing over here, but you guys are wasting time, like worrying about politics and reading the news and all this kind of crap, right? Like, that was kind of my my view I'm like, oh my God, like voting is so stupid, man. It's such a waste of time, you know, mm. right? Like that, that was kind of my vibe. Yeah. And I think, so I think there's been, I think there's been two things. I think, I think my view now is actually that stuff is very important. And I think, I think there's kind of been two, two reasons for that. Mm. One is I think sort of getting married and, you know, hoping to have kids one day, etc. I think that kind of gives you a level of skin in the game where you actually can't then just sort of go about society as a consumer. And I, okay, yeah, yeah, I guess my, my general sort of, I think I've had a bit of a general shift where I think I was kind of like a, I sort of navigated society as a consumer, basically of like, ah, oh, well, I'm living my little life over here. I have all of these uh, options out there and I'm going to, you know, get my meals delivered and, uh, you know, whatever else, and you know, it kind of, uh, kind of li- live in society, like like this sort of, you know, in this sort of passive way, mm. you know, um, and I think what I've come to realize, I think just like gradually, yeah, I think since like getting married, I think the other the other like political awakening for me has been like all the stuff going on in like you know Palestine right now, like and over the last few months, where. I think the mistake I had made previously is that I thought that there is a way, well, I thought that there is a, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of, uh, you know, concerned with my own stuff. I am, uh, I'm just kind of like this neutral party in all of this kind of, in all of this sort of stuff. I'm just like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't really care about X, Y, and Z. I'm just kind of taking this neutral position and concerning myself with the stuff that uh, that I can directly influence or something like this. Sure. Um, but actually, what what I now understand is that the whole public square, you know, like the you know any kind of public discourse, the media, politics, whatever, there is no way to occupy a neutral position. The public square is basically various various people pushing their ideologies and the, their agendas and mm. like battling it out you sure. know, in the in, in the arena. You know, and um, you know these are these are, you know, ver- various people with 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 power and all this kind of stuff. The public square is basically an ideological arena, and there's no way to opt out of it. If you feel like you're a passive, if, if you feel like oh, I'm just not in the arena, man. You know, those guys are into politics. I'm just not into that. There's actually no way to opt out of it because everyone is in the arena. And if you think you're a neutral party, if you think like, oh yeah, I'm just like not fussed about that stuff. You're just going to be passively, subconsciously consuming the sort of, you know, the the idea, you know, the, the shrapnel from the ideological warfare that is happening between, between these other people. 
And like, you will be subtly forming opinions about things and, you know, you will be subtly developing sentiments towards things based on like, you know, random stuff in the media and, you know, based on like other, other people pushing their ideological agendas is actually going to affect you. And there's actually no way to, to be neutral in that space. Can you think of an example here? Yeah, I mean, literally anything. I mean, uh, just literally anything in the media, the way different groups of people are portrayed. Um, I mean, yeah, for example, the way Muslims are portrayed, the way brown people are portrayed, the way, you know, for example, in in, in, in like Israel-Palestine, the way like Palestinians are talked about, et cetera, et cetera. That if you're a passive consumer of the media, you will end up getting these ideas in your head, whether Wait, you like it or not. Uh, if you're... That, that's if you're a passive consumer of the media, but that the, 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 you, you, your previous position was not, I want to passively consume media. It was... Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Media, so I'm, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about media specifically as something that is quite overt. But I mean, the whole of, uh, I mean, the whole of the, the public square is, I mean, it's, it's ideologies, right? It's like, you know, the, there, there, there is no way to be this like blank slate that, that is just like neutral on things. Like if, if you think, I think if you think you're neutral on things, you're actually, ba you're actually basically going to be, uh, on board with whatever the prevailing, you know, so, ideology and power is. Okay, yeah, right. But I feel like so I uh, I'm sympathetic to the don't watch or read the news yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. but not for the reason that I think I'm a neutral, passive, blank slate kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Just more from a sense of, for example, uh, what's in the news? Like what what Keir Starmer is doing? Our policy A, policy B. Yeah, oh, yeah. he signed some papers that apparently there's going to be a solar wind farm that's going to be opening sure. up in the yeah, north yeah, of England. Yeah. yeah. Why do I care? Oh, there's flooding in Yorkshire. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, some kid got kidnapped in the Isle of Man. <laughs> okay, let's not go to the. I mean, like, you know that sort of thing. Sure. Look, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not trying to make a case here for like go on the BBC News website and like read what's going. Like, read well, everything so what's, on there. What's the case that you're trying to make? Because I, 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 I also have. have okay. Reason, okay. I, I've the, recently started having inklings where I'm okay, like, yeah, oh, the, maybe the, I should the, inform okay, myself. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. The case that I'm trying to make is that actually everyone you know, needs to educate themselves in, well, I guess, what's what's traditionally known as the, the liberal arts. Um, because the... Why? What if I'm an AI researcher and I, can, I feel like I couldn't really care less about the liberal the, the liberal arts? Or I'm a yeah, mathematician I think if you're, I think if trying you're, to solve Fermat, Fermat's last theorem or whatever. Okay, by the liberal arts, I, I, I guess I'm mainly, I'm mainly talking about history and philosophy and you know politics i mean all, all of these things kind of blend into one at sure. some point but i'm yeah. talking about that sphere that sphere like of ppe things. kind of thing yeah yeah just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay um i think if you if if you don't do that yeah then like i said you will you will subconsciously be but just by osmosis yep. you will subconsciously suck up the prevailing ideologies sure. and the prevailing ideas and the prevailing narratives yeah that are actually formed. Okay, let me say this. Let, maybe, let, let me use a metaphor. Okay, sure, please. The uh, the public square, it just sort of you know society, right? Okay. In large part, involves a bunch of people with various ideologies and various ag agendas. Sure. You know, let me. Uh, I'll give you a few examples, right? Um, you know that you have the sort of like. You know, you have some very liberal ideas, you have very conservative ideas, you have like all sorts of flavors of all of these things. Yeah. You've got like, you know, people who are more Marxist leaning and you've got, you know, you know, the sort of free market capitalist uh, bros. Free market yeah. capitalist bros, you know. Sure. There's all these different views on things. Yep. And all of these different people, uh, people who um, hold all these different views are battling it out to make their view the dominant view in society. Okay, right? yeah, agreed. And the current and and uh, the, you know there is a current dominant view in society sure. that has like you know various things as part of it. You know, I guess in in, in the UK or whatever, you know, we might call this like um, you know, we're, we're like a, we're like a you know a liberal democracy or something. And, and there's you know there's there's like various ideas that are that are caught up in that. Mm. And I think if you if you're not if if you don't see yourself as an active participant in the ideological arena you are going to you're going to you know basically people are people are battling it out they're basically like these sort of uh you know there's like these animes where like people are a bit the big robot animes where they're like fighting robots or whatever sure. right people are going to be battling it out 
you got these, you know, these like really big fighting robots battling out their ideologies yeah. and like trying to, you know, trying to convince people of, of whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, it's pretty dirty arena, right? It's yeah. not, it's not like there's any rules. It, the, the rule is basically like, you know, win however you can, yeah. you know, by using, you know, whatever rhetoric, whatever sure. kind of influence, you know, this is, this is not an, you know, this is not like a, this is not a, a clean, a clean fight or something. Sure. It's very dirty. Um, and if you're not aware of what's going on, you're basically going to be like bre breathing in the fumes and the, the random crap yep. coming off of this ideological battle. Okay. There will be, you know, some kind of prevailing, prevailing ideology. Yeah. And you will be breathing that in and you'll, you'll just kind of, you know, that'll become part of like how you see the world, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, why is this a problem if someone wants to opt out of that? And like, why, can, why can I not outsource the worrying about whether we're a liberal democracy or a conservative democracy or like the millennia of political discourse and the millennia yeah, of yeah. figuring out whether is it democracy or theocracy or autocracy yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. dictatorship? Like, why can't I just outsource that to the generally smart people around me yeah. Or like well, the the one publication, like, I don't know, The Economist or like The Guardian or whatever yeah, my yeah. friends happen to read. Why can't I just outsource all that stuff? I think if you outsource all of that stuff, you are basically, look, I think that the default position is if you're not an active participant, you you will kind of be going along with whatever the prevailing yeah. thing is. And if you you'll have this sort of infinite genjutsu <laughs> yeah, yeah, cast yeah. to cast on you with we'll, the we'll infinite Tsukuyomi. Tsukuyomi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, where, look, where the worldview of the person who happens to be pulling the strings yes, behind yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. media outlet that your yeah. friends <laughs> your friends consume. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, for example, if you're like in Arkansas, you're probably going to have a different sort of default sure, Genjutsu absolutely. cost over yeah, you compared yeah, yeah. to if you're in like Oxford University. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no there, there's no there's no way to there's there's no way to opt out. You're you 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 are you are forming a worldview. Yeah. You know whether you're doing it actively and thoughtfully and you know with the context of sure. history. Or whether you're not, you are forming a worldview. You are nav navigating the world in a certain way. Yeah, agreed. And I think most people, um, I think particularly most um, most modern people, you know, for, for I think for, for for us modern people, you know, it's very important that we are, uh, you know, living living our lives in in our own way. You know, we don't like this idea about being like, you know. Being a puppet, Tri being, being, yeah. being a puppet of like uh, the you know, matrix. whatever, whatever, you <laughs> yeah. know, the matrix. Yeah, literally, yeah. literally. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's, it's a decent metaphor, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look. I don't want to be just, you know, some pawn in some, you know, that's being like I'm moved around. Up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's being like, you know, move, moved around by the, you know, these like more powerful people who are trying yeah. to push their agendas. Yeah, the puppet masters. Yeah, I want to I wanna be able to peel back the curtain, make sense of it myself and decide, hey, why, like, how do I see the world? Like, how, how should I think things should be, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, and so I think basically, um, uh, what was, where was I going with this? Yeah, so I, I think, I think the the kind of one one of the realizations was like, yeah, there actually is no way to, th there's no neutral space that you can occupy, mm. um, you know, I ideologically, or or even like physically, right? You know, you're you're paying taxes, your taxes are going towards, you know, whatever the the current government in power is doing, you know, and that you know that currently includes like, you know, bombing kids in Gaza, for example. That's mm. that's probably not something. A lot of people want to be on board with mm. and so if you're not like you are you are actually complicit you know, to some degree in, in like all of this stuff that's going on around you and if you're not aware of it you're going to be actively furthering lots of other people's agendas without realizing it and um you won't really be coming to your own conclusions or you know, like having your own sense of like hey this is this is like how how things should work or how, how, how things should operate and i think the other thing is the other thing i hadn't really realized yeah, I guess my, my point about just how like dirty the whole thing is, I hadn't really realized that. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the media around any issue, it is almost entirely unhelpful. Like the, the I think the only thing the mainstream media broadly tells you about any kind of, you know, there, there are some issues which are like, no, you know, not that contentious, you know, some, you know, guy was kidnapped in the Isle of Man or whatever, right? It's like, Okay, cool. Like this, you know, it's it's pretty, you know, it's it's as close to just like yeah. factual news as you can cool. get. It's like, okay, guys, you know, kidnapped an Isle man, you know, that's you know that sucks. Maybe I want to read more about it. Maybe I don't. Um, you know, there's there's stuff like that. But then a whole lot of the news is actually not like that. It's all interpretation. The uh, almost everything else is vastly open to interpretation, and obviously different people are presenting their different interpretations. Sure. 
and it's most you know it seems like it's mostly driven just by rhetoric it's it's not driven by you know people having uh you know any kind of i, I don't like using the word rational but I, it's it's not driven by people you know having like a sort of rational discussion about hey this is this is the situation or whatever it's driven by like rhetorical moves and sleights of hand and you know throwing sand in the other person's eye and you know all these uh, kind of- what kind of media are you are you referring to because for example you know uh an article from the economist about yeah. why joe biden should step down yeah i mean clearly it's not just stating the fact it's stating an opinion this newspaper or this magazine yeah, yeah. believes that joe biden should step down for all of the following reasons yes yeah, yeah. which you read and you think hmm, okay cool I, yeah, yeah, there's very few uh, sort of publications out there that were saying why Joe Biden should not step down, <laughs> for example. Like help, help. Like what do, uh, where where is the sand throwing here? Like what am I what am I missing? I think this. The, I think the I think the sand throwing is at a more meta level of like a what's even covered, b like how it's talked about, c you know if you know for example, in this article about like why Joe Biden should step down, it's going to make a bunch of points. It's going to say well you know uh, point A, point B, point C. If you don't re- if you don't have the co- you know kind of your own framework in which you can fit this argument that it's making, then, I mean I mean a lot of a lot of what happens in the media is actually just like there is a disagreement on you know the facts and what is being presented as fact in many contexts is actually highly contestable mm-hmm. and you know for, you know in, in this article about why Joe Joe Biden should step down there might be like a bunch of things presented as like you know cold facts mm. uh to, to kind of back up the case that you know it may well be highly contestable mm. and for example if you don't have like a well you know if you don't have some understanding in that case of like american politics okay who you know yeah. how does this all fit together um you know like what's what's the current like what what what's the current like discourse on the topic if you don't if you don't have a sense of that I don't think you can really make sense of this article about why Joe Biden should step. You'll read it, you'll say, you'll say like, "Oh, okay, yeah." I mean, it seems to be a reasonable case or something. I guess Joe Biden should step down or whatever. Um, but you're, I don't think you'll actually be able to sort of make sense of it in any meaningful way. I mean, sure, but I could say the same. Like, you know, you're going through life not worrying about like your health. Yeah, you should read. You should read out "Live by Peter Attia." It yeah. would be hard to make sense of some of the stuff unless you have a little bit of a background in yeah, understanding yeah, yeah. what a randomized control trial is and a meta analysis. And yeah, like, yeah, sure, for sure. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he explains a lot of things, but actually, you know, maybe he's doing some mental sleight of hand about like whether yeah, yeah. resveratrol is actually good for you and actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that shit is not. Uh, so, but I'm not saying everyone should read the stuff about the you know, yeah. resveratrol and AMPK and all this, all yeah. these molecular pathways, even though it does actually affect the way you live your life. Yep. But it sounds like you're saying that people should inform themselves about american politics i like which i, I would i would kind of disagree with yeah i no, you use the example of this this article about why joe biden should step down that's that's why i'm talking about american politics no sure i'm making a more general point that okay so for okay so for example in the in the peter atia outlive case right yeah. you know he's he's like trying to he's like trying to present why you know you should like care about your health why you should care about your health yeah you know, and i'm trying to convince you why you should care about your health okay yeah the I think there are there are there are some things that are not highly contested, and there are other things that are that are contested, contestable. You know, they're just different kinds of things, right? Sure. If Peter Atia has got this book about like, hey, you know, this is why you should eat healthy or whatever, um, I think there is a. I think I think in that kind of realm, in the realm of like you know health, for example, right. I mean, I guess COVID kind of like doesn't, you know, mm. kind of kind of kills this a bit. But you, you know, you to a larger degree, you can trust the experts of like, hey, Peter Atia, you know, doesn't really stand to gain anything from misleading me <laughs> about like how I should be healthy, you know, whatever. Like this, <laughs> how, how much walking I should be doing. <laughs> like how much <laughs> yeah. how much walking I should be doing. Like, you know, if you read the book. And, you know, I, I don't think most people who read the book will then take away that, like, man, everything Peter Atia is saying is like, this is like, you know, divine revelation or something. You probably read the book, you think, okay, this sounds pretty solid. It sounds like he's done his homework. Yeah, pro- you know, probably some of these studies, you know, might not be like the, the strongest things or whatever. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's, there's wiggle room for, like, things getting messed up along the way. But probably it's directionally correct, and like you know, this is you know, I should I should like take this stuff on board, right? Yeah. Now, there's I yeah I think it, I think a lot of it comes down to, it, you know, di- different fields basically need to be approached in different ways. Mm, okay. Um, 
And I think the, 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 the liberal arts, you know, history, philosophy, politics, these kinds of things, these are fields that are not driven by, um, you know, not, not, not really driven in an empirical way in the sense that like Peter writes here, you know, trying to show these studies about these are fields that are driven in a much more interpretive way. Okay. Sure. Um, where there is no expert who you can outsource your thing on. There is no, you know, there's no, like, there's no neutral point of view mm. that you can just like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to take you know, I'm going to sit outside all of this and just observe it from a neutral point of view and make it, you know, there's, there's no way to do that. The only way to make sense of it for, if you, if you care about making sense, make sense of it for yourself, which I think most modern people, most modern people, you know, we wouldn't like the idea of like, Oh shit, I'm, I'm just like a, you know, I'm just like the pawn of like all these random people pushing their things. So I, I think most of us don't like that idea. Um, if that is the case, I think the only, the only way to make sense of it is you have to, you have to get stuck in, you have mm. to get, you have to get muddy. There's that, there's not, there's not really a way. Wait, what to, do you mean by get stuck in? Uh, you mean like, uh, uh, stop posting on Twitter or? No, no, no. I mean, I, I just mean like, uh, be, you know, like actively engage in the thing, actively understand what's going on. Um, and I think part of, yeah, I mean, does it, does that make sense so far? Okay, so let me, let me see if I can summarize yeah, your position. Yeah. Your position is most people will probably agree that they do not want to be a, a puppet, a, a puppet being sort of uh, moved and uh, joked around by the yeah. You don't want to, you don't want, you don't, yeah, or like you know, maybe you would like you, you to don't think, want to be a, you don't want to be a leaf in the wind being blown around sure. by like you would you would like to think that the worldview that you hold is uh, a result of your own conclusions. Yeah, you would like to think that if. For example, you think Elon Musk equals bad, mm. that that is actually a result of your own worldview rather mm. than actually you've just absorbed the a yeah. f- a handful of narratives that have been craftily. Yeah, they're like put... anti Elon uh, propaganda machine or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similarly, if you think Elon Musk equals good, you would yeah. like to believe that, like, oh, actually, this is, you know, I've, I've come to this for, for reasonable reasons. And I, I, yeah. I understand why some people say he's bad. I understand why people, some, some people say he's good. And yeah. my personal opinion, is that he's just misunderstood or whatever that thing might sure, be. Sure, yeah. I think the Elon yeah. thing is like a very constrained case. Mm. Um, I'm trying to use it yeah, as a yeah, specific yeah. concept. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So in that context, so you're saying that people, if you start off with a position that I would like to generally, I, I, I would like my worldview to be inf- informed by I, me rather than I, by... I, yeah, I, I, I would like then. to just actively have formed my worldview sure. rather than passively have just like, you know, breathed in all these ideas about Elon Musk and about okay, this guy. So, so most people would, prob- would probably yeah, agree yeah, with yeah. that. Yeah. Most people uh, might buy the Paul Graham argument of like, you should never read the news because you can't really have control over it anyway. Okay. What you're saying is that if you buy that argument, you are allowing your worldview to actually be dictated by the prevailing narrative of the people around you. Uh, yeah, the people the, yeah, the people around you, which includes various, I mean, it's not just like the people around you as in my friends, like no, yeah, sure. even yeah. if you're not like actively reading, you know, the news website. Yeah. Whether you scroll on Instagram or TikTok actually makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instagram reels and TikToks are not actually the same because there's actually like a different puppet masters. Yeah, sure. One of them lives in San Francisco. But, the other one yeah, lives yeah, in China, you yeah, know, yeah, that kind of thing. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it was very deep. I mean, even outside of like overtly consuming the media, mm. there are just prevailing ideas in the zeitgeist. There are just these sure. ideas. Like if you live in the UK versus if you live in Yemen. Yeah, yeah. Or, like or, the thing. Yeah, that's a bad example. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or if you live in the UK versus you, you versus you live in Singapore, you probably have different opinions about like how things should be governed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like how, how barbaric is governed. the death penalty and should capital punishment be a thing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And what yeah. should you do if you catch someone with drugs? Like yeah, yeah. just the fact that you're living in London versus Singapore means you'll probably have yeah, a slightly different gonna, perspective. Yeah, on there's, there's going to be all sorts of ideas roaming around in the zeitgeist. That are and those ideas are generated and driven by the people who like have the power or have mm. some level of influence and are pushing their agendas. Yep. They do make their way into the zeitgeist, and everyone else does breathe these things in. Yep. And I think unless you are actively aware of what you're breathing in and you expend some effort to actively engage with it, understand where where did it come from? Yeah, you know, like what actually is this? You know, what are the you know what are the alternatives? Mm. Uh, you know, like where do I actually stand on this thing? You, you know, you will end up being that, like, uh, the, just sort of this leaf blowing in the wind, you know, blowing in the, in the wind or, or maybe more like blowing in, in the farts of various people who are like, you know, trying to like, sure. you know. So okay, again, so that's, that's, just to bring it down to a concrete example, yeah, yeah. before you introduced me to Louise Perry, yeah, yeah, against yeah, the sexual yeah. revolution, yeah. I was, I thought I landed completely spontaneously at the conclusion that casual sex should be like playing squash. 
Right. And it's just like, it's just a thing that consenting, that consenting adults do. Yeah. I mean, I've never thought it's, that deeply about it. It's just obvious. It's just obvious. It's, it's just, just, it's just blatantly the, obvious. It's just the natural way to view the world. It's, it's, yeah. Just, yeah, it's just blatantly obvious <laughs> right, that right. like, there's nothing that special about it. And provided two consenting adults are doing the thing, well, it, it, it should be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you read this book and you're like, oh, actually. Yeah. Turns out this is not actually that obvious. And actually this is a thing that stemmed from the 1960s and like the fact that birth control was a thing and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, and like yeah. these sorts of narratives. And oh, actually there's, a, there's actually an opposite point of view that says yeah. actually, you know, sex is different than playing squash yeah, yeah. as evidenced by example A, example yeah, B, yeah. example C. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe it's not that obvious. Yeah, but, I think, that's, I think yeah. that's, I think that's a very good example of like an idea that is clearly very prevalent in the zeitgeist, you know, that like, is it's 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 a pre theoretic it's pre theoretical for people you know I I think when when an idea is like that in the in the zeitgeist it's not like people are reading some book and arriving at the idea it's not like people are you know reading some paper and arriving at it, it is pre theoretical it just seems obvious it just seems intuitive and natural and the obvious way to be human right and there's there's always going to be lots of these ideas around mm. and uh you know, these ideas are going to change you know what sure. ten years from now is going to be different twenty years from now is going to be different mm. um, like right now it's 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 obvious that slavery is bad. Yeah, yeah, in Aristotle's time, that was not obvious. Well, that was, there was yeah, no yeah. thinker in yeah. the in that time period, even though we still read them today, who yeah. said slavery is bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it just wasn't obvious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. there's there's going to be all sorts of this kind of stuff. So J Jason Blakely, who we've had on the pod, I think he's like a great theorist of ideology and this kind of stuff. So he has a book called Lost in Ideology, which he touched on uh, when he was on the pod last time. So we might be able to have him on. Um, but yeah, anyway, okay. So look. Let me let me continue to advance my point here. Okay, so you know, use use the Elon Elon Musk example, all right? Like yeah. various people are gonna be saying various things about Elon Musk. Some people are gonna be like, oh well, don't you know his granddad had an emerald mine? He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, you know, kind of thing, hmm. right? You know, that that will be presented, you know, as that's fact. fact yeah. That is highly contestable, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know, so the, and, and so so that's one way in which you might be misled on this Elon thing. Um, For the record, the, the the contestable thing on this is that I I think uh, that his dad never actually owned the Emerald Mine. He never had a stake in it. He was just an employee of the guy who ran the Emerald Mine, the Emerald Mine, uh, and he ended up making about two hundred thirty thousand dollars, but then losing all that money. So Elon didn't really get, uh, well, wasn't really born with a silver spoon in his mouth. At least yeah. according to Walter uh, Walter yeah. Isaacson, Elon's biographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so look, but okay. So which I also didn't realize until I listened to that like three days ago in the yeah, it's like because man, I had all these people. Are, I mean, why was Elon's dad was rich and old and, and owned an emerald mine? Yeah, I saw why, it on. I saw. I saw I, a bunch of people. I saw sufficiently many people say on Twitter that it's it, like, why was they only lying about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah, okay. But here's the thing about the Elon example. The Elon example is largely neither here nor there. It's like okay, my personal view of Elon Musk. It does. It's you know, it's not too consequential, right? Um. I think this, okay, so I think this is where the sort of, you know, for me, like getting married and thinking about, okay, having a family and this kind of stuff, this is where kids come in. Because I think a lot, you know, all right, here's the thing. I think largely one can, as, as a solo agent, one can largely um, navigate society just worrying about like, you know, your own preferences on things and, you know, just trying to like, uh, you know, satisfy those. Um, and, you know, you can largely take a sort of very politically liberal view on, you can, you can largely take quite a politically liberal view on, on, on things and say, well, you know, everyone's got their preferences, you know, just let people, you know, kind of let people do what they want. Um, you know, and and you can kind of navigate society in that way and and you'll have a decent time and i think and i think that's the case if you're just thinking about yourself right but when i think faced with the prospect of one day you know inshallah having some having kids then it's like you actually can't you can't take that um you can't take that position of like well you know i've got my preferences other people have their preferences let people do their thing or whatever whatever because you have this kid here and if uh, and, and, and you've got to then ask your question, uh, the question, where are the kids' preferences coming from? You know, like, what, what are the forces that form the kids' preferences? You know, if, you know, is it possible to really just, you know, have this, you know, uh, you know uh, take this, you know, p p political position of, like, you know, let, let people do what they want broadly. Is it possible to take that position and, like, raise a family with that? I think probably not because, you know, un unless you believe that there is some, you know, 
some you know some some special thing inside everyone that just produces all of their preferences in this perfect way that they, you know that they that they stick to their their preferences come from what's going on around them right and as i as i said what's going on around you is a battle of other people's preferences being advanced as ideologies and various agendas um and if you're not actively guiding your kids in terms of you know in in that arena they're just going to be being buffeted around as this leaf in the wind whatever and like yeah they'll 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 end up with some preferences for sure and and you know you might take the position well those are the preferences let them do what they want but if you're not yeah i think if you're not cognizant of like okay let's 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 like take the derivative of that function you know wh- where are those preferences coming from then it's going to be coming from other people basically and i think again i think most people would not like the idea that hey you know my you know my my kids are sort of just absorbing all this random stuff on you know on youtube and tiktok and you know uh, whatever you know whatever is in the zeitgeist etc cetera, etc cetera, as their way of like forming their world you you kind of you kind of hope that hey i'm playing an active role in helping them navigate the you know the arena and you know and 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 you kind of hope that hey i can like pass on my worldview to the next generation and i want to be like an you know, actively guiding that um and so i think i think that is also like a thing that gives you skin in the game where it's like mm-hmm. okay i actually i actually can't just like even pretend that i you know that i can neutrally navigate things cuz like someone's got to be telling this kid some stuff <laughs> you know mm. so i think that that's been another thing that's made me feel like okay i need to i need to actively concern myself with this um and there, there was one some other thing I wanted, I wanted, I wanted that's a good point yeah i'm fine with that yeah and so that and then um uh yeah and then i think on a more sort of on a more like individual level i think navigating society as a sort of passive consumer um I think is like a I d- I don't think it's in like, you know, I don't think it leads to one having like it is I it, it feels a bit like spiritually um deficient to kind of like you know, view oneself as like hey, I'm just kind of going about doing my thing. Yeah, all this stuff is going. I think I think it's it's like it's quite a you know, I think it is a the the correct human response to stuff is to care about stuff the correct human response to what's going on around your community your society the rest of the world the correct human response is actually to care about these things um and what do you mean by correct i mean that like sh- sh- you, are you saying that i should care what happens in the pennsylvania primary uh i maybe not the pennsylvania primary specifically um, so what do you, what do you mean I think should I care that um, there is a planning permit in place to get rid of the trees in my backyard? Because I care about that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, like I think you're you're fine to care about that. But should I care that there's a solar farm being built in Yorkshire? <laughs> like, like what, what do you mean? It is the correct human response to care about things. I think it's a, I think it's the correct human response to because there's a finite number of things we can we can really care yeah yeah about. absolutely there absolutely is a finite number of things that we can care about. But I think I was burying my I I was not not even close to like you know that whatever yeah, that limit is <laughs> yeah. i was burying in my head in the sand and basically just caring about what's you know what's directly going on in my life and like the direct people that i know and and like actually care about and you know whatever's happening on the other side of the world whatever wars are going on yeah. or you know whatever stuff my government is doing that i'm like you know funding whatever stuff yeah. is you know going on uh you know three three de- three roads down from me from where i live or whatever yeah like that was kind of below my line but you know to use the chamath <laughs> the chamath phrase that's that was like you know i was like whatever man doesn't doesn't affect me because i can't impact it sure. um i think the reason to care about the, the reason to to care about it is not not is not only because you you can do something about it outwardly yeah. but i think it affects your inward state of like what kind of a person you are um and i think the correct i, I think the correct human the correct way to be human the right way to be human is to actually care about like other people inwardly even if you can't affect you know even if you can't affect it outwardly which is also like a pretty strong political position to hold like that thing that you just said because i imagine some people would say um 
my vague understanding of people who are more conservative leaning is that they care much more about what happens in their local vicinity. I care a lot about what happens with my family, with my local neighborhood, my local community. And I really could not care less about what happens in the, in the state next door or in the country next door or sure. in that country across the Atlantic. Um, so like, yeah. I'm not making a play. Like, what, what's uh, the point that you're you're making? Is I, I, I don't quite understand. The point I'm the point I'm making. Okay, for example, again, I think I think thinking about, I think thinking about kids and how you would want your kids to turn out, mm. it really cuts through all the crap. I think it, it like cuts through so much crap in like the, you know, in in the discourse. Cool. Uh, so I'm thinking about how I want my kids to turn out. Okay. Do you want? I still don't really care about the Pennsylvania primary. Yeah, no, I'm not saying care about that. I'm making a, I'm making an abstract point here. Okay, okay, I make an abstract point where there is one way to there is one way to be human in mm. modern society, which is to broadly um, have these sort of blinders on, uh, bl these blinders on. You kind of like you know trying to trying to do good for you know yourself and and like you know the direct people that you care about, yep. but you don't really know what's going on in the rest of the world. You don't, you don't know, yeah, you, you don't know what's, you know, what, what, what kind of you know, stuff is going on in your own, in the rest of your country, in the rest sure. of your neighborhood, et yep. cetera, et cetera. Yep. So that, that is one way to be human. Yep. Of like broadly stick your head in the sand. You have this sort of very narrow sphere of concern about like, Hey, like, am I, am I like happy in my life? Am, am I like providing for my family? Yep. And like, you know, do I get to see my friends or whatever? Sure. And that's that's one way. Which, for the record, I think is a reasonable way to, to live. As long as you're consciously choosing that path. Uh, okay, we, we can get, okay, we can get to that in a sec. But, okay, yeah. but I think there's another way where, like, you know, you're doing those things. Like, yeah, you care about, yeah. you know, you care about, like, having a good life for yourself and, you know, providing for your family or whatever and seeing your friends. But also, you care about, hey, like... What is going, you know, what's life like for like the rest of the people in my county that I live in? You know, like, are my neighbors going hungry? I like, you know, people, you know, th that that's, you know, what is my government up to in other countries? You know, like, how do I feel about that? Like, do I, you know, what, what is, you know, what, what is, what is going on in the rest of humanity? Okay. I think if you, you know, and look, this isn't me, you know, I'm, I, I, I really don't want this podcast to come across as like me on some high horse of like, oh, well, I've, I've reached alignment. Like I am, I, I aspire to be like the second category. <laughs> yeah. And I think if, I think when most people, and you know, you can get into like the, you know, you can get into you know, discussion and arguments and disagreements, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing that cuts to the crap is, would you rather your kids turn out in bucket A or in bucket B? And I think you'd rather your kids turn out in bucket B. And again, I'm making very, I'm very, very general. Answer. I'm not saying like my kid needs to be like, you know, losing sleep over the whatever, you know, the Pennsylvania the primary, Pennsylvania <laughs> primary right? Yeah. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying there is a, there is a correct human, human response. Like, uh, you know, there's sometimes it's something called fellow feeling. You know, we should have this fellow feeling um, towards other human beings, mm. and, um. That is, that is like a better way to be. And I, I would rather my kids are that way than not have this fellow feeling and instead um, just sort of care about like directly, you know, what's going on, you know, in front of your, you know, in front of your face and and kind of like stick your head in the sand about the rest of it. That's, that's, a, that, that's on an internal. I think I've already made the external case for why actually you should care about a bit more than like what's going on directly in your life. I think I have, I've, I've made the external case for that, but this is more mm. of just like, Hey, like what kind of a, you know, what kind of a person do I think I should be? What does, what does care mean? This is a thing that I've been, I've been grappling with for years with the whole yeah. like effective altruism stuff. Um, Lucia, for example, really cares to the point that she loses sleep over the fact that kids are dying in Africa. Yeah. You, you and I don't care to that degree that we're losing sleep over the fact that kids are dying in Africa. Yeah. You and I are both taking the 10% pledge. Um, I think you have, right? <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, where we donate 10% of our income and stuff to charity to help the kids in Africa. 
um, in my case, I do it despite not losing sleep over it. Yeah. So like, what is an appropriate level of care like here? What's an, I'm what, what's appropriate on the carometer that you would I, like? How how sensitive would you like your kids' carometer to, to be? I'm not particularly. I'm not trying to like draw a line in the sand. Hmm. I'm trying to distinguish between a binary thing, right? I'm trying to make the case for like, you'd like to, you shouldn't you'd be like zero, kids, you should be one. Sure. You'd like your kids to care about something other than just themselves. Something other than... Just themselves most, and their family. Uh, everyone cares about, you know, most people care about something other than just themselves. Yeah. Um, so you'd like the sphere of, uh, your, your kids' sphere of like concern, the things that they think about to be beyond, certainly beyond themselves, but also beyond their immediate family and also beyond their extended family and also beyond their like local parish and also beyond their county, you'd like them to at least think on the level of like national issues and also I mean, international we're already, issues we're already getting pretty... and also intergalactic issues kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, who, who actually cares about their local county? Like all their, all their local parish. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what my neighbors are up to. I don't know what's going on, like on the street behind my house or something. Right. Yeah. So like, that's already quite, you know, I think that's already great. You know, if someone <laughs> like cares about their local county, there's, you know, I mean, like, like our friends are held us, for example, fellow feeling, yeah. feeling towards like people in their local county. Yeah, our friends are held. You know, campaigns for the Labour government. You know, that kind of thing. You like really wants the the, the Labour councillor to be elected in the southern borough of Oxfordshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I think. I think. So, yeah. You'd I like th your kids to be more like that. I think. So, so, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Someone like that who I would have previously called like. Oh man, this guy's just this guy's this guy. This guy's a cuck, man. Like, why is he wasting his you know, Why is he wasting? His, like, I think I think someone who has yeah. Know, most of the record, uh, <laughs> I feel like most of the sentiment towards the hell has gone from "What the hell are you doing?" to "Good on you, mate." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's been a real shift over the yeah, last ten when years. Yeah, we were at school and stuff. It's like, what? What is this guy talking about? What even at what? even at uni, like, dude, what? Like, who, 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 who cares who's in the local council? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's like, oh, nice. You care who's in the local council? Please tell me more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, look, I'm not. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure how productive or useful, or I, I don't know to what extent. Like, I don't know how to say like, hey, this is the right amount that one should mm. care. I think it. I think there is a binary thing. There is, and like, that. Yeah, there is a binary thing of like, not having this fellow feeling, mm. um, versus having it. I Sorry, think not having the fellow feeling, like on, on what level are we talking about? Because we, we've established most people care about themselves. We've established most <coughs> people care about their family, so they have fellow feeling towards their family. Most people probably have fellow feeling towards like the people they interact with on a day, on a day to day basis. Like, what's I don't think family counts. No, no. Okay, yeah. yeah. So when when I'm talking about fellow feeling, I'm talking about the the your your sort of your feeling or sentiment towards someone you have no relation to. Okay, I'm not talking about your family or friends. And the doorman you know? in my building. Sure, the dormitory building, the guy. Uh, does the guy uh, does, who lives does two that count as someone who I have? A fear, uh, are we talking about fellow feeling for the kid dying in Africa, or are we talking fellow feeling for like like? There's obviously different gradations of yeah, 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 kind of closeness to different people. And for example, the reason that you and I care more about the Israel-Palestine conflict than we do about something happening in Pennsylvania, yeah, is because we're affected by a shared identity. For example, yeah, sure. Um. So, I mean, so there's I all these kind of like concentric circles of different things. And, and what I'm trying to understand is what, what's your position on like a good amount or like, I'm not, what, like I'm, where, where is the supposed binary that you see? I think, I think the, I mean, I can tell you in my life, there had been a binary of like, I didn't care at all about any, like any of these things. I viewed it as like, yep, I can't affect that stuff. Therefore it doesn't concern me. And now I think I do care some, you know, I, I care. I have some level of care about it. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 mainly trying to talk about like going from like zero to one on that. Okay. Like previously know, you like, were like, or previously we knew people who were like, I don't believe in recycling because yeah, like there's nothing I can do about about the environment. And now you and I probably both care about the environment more than we did ten years ago. Yeah. Or at least aspire to. <laughs> yeah. Or at least aspire to. Yeah. yeah. Similarly, so, 10 years ago, you and I probably didn't care about what's going on in American politics. And now yeah. we care a little bit more about what happens in American politics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any need to opine on like, hey, how much like how much sleep should I be losing over what's happening 10 miles away from me versus a thousand miles, you know, yeah. like, tell me what, tell me, you know. 
<laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Give me the rules. <laughs> you know, I don't. I, uh, I, really... the, the, the reason I double clicked on this because yeah. you you phrased it as there is. I think there is a correct way to be a human. Yeah, yeah. Which okay, is but, this. but that's a zero to one. I think the correct way is one. And like you know, there's there's a whole you know. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying well, from to... zero miles to infinite, essentially. <laughs> What's that? From zero miles to infinite. Some, some people would extend the care to non-human animals as well. Sure. Some people yeah, would extend yeah. the care to the, the environment. Yeah. yeah people yeah. would extend the care to all species. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and I think, I think going from zero more to more virtuous zero. to be like, to have a wider circle of care than a narrow circle of circle of care. Ah, I think you're missing the point. I think it's not, it's not about the circle of care. What is it, what is it about then? I think... The look the in the case of things like friends and family, right? You are actively involved in these relationships. You stand to gain and you stand to lose based on what's going on in this relationship. You have overt response. You know, like that is that is fundamentally different oh. than you know what you know than like how you treat the waiter how you treat the waiter or, or I mean you're interacting with the waiter but like yeah. what you f- you know okay here's the thing nice a few okay a few a few years ago on the pod I you know after reading Courage to be Disliked it has this idea of like viewing your fellow human beings as your comrades in some sense right sure. yeah. you're on the you're on the train some people are like laughing around you know so there's a group of you you're on the train alone like a loser and some people are like you know, it, 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 there's like a group of people, they're laughing, they're laughing around, having a good time, they're chatting. What is your feeling towards, you know, that's more like, that's more of the fellow feeling I'm talking about. What is your sentiment? What is your instinctive sentiment towards them? Is it like, oh, that's so great. My comrades are having a good time. You know, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm part of this community of like people on the train, people in London, you know, whatever the community mm. is, sure. you know, you do have some, you know, what is, what is your sort of somatic response? Is that the right word? I don't know. As in, in terms of like bodily feeling. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. I mean, what is your what is your feeling about this thing? Sure. You know, if any, that's what I'm. That's the fellow feeling I'm talking about. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about it in a sphere of concern of like you know my family and then the next concentric circle out or whatever. The the binary that I'm trying to trying to set up here is like caring about stuff that does you know is not part of your life directly. Or like care, you know, having some level of care. I don't think it's a binary. This is the thing. Like this is where I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand what you're talking about. Because for example, I could have the fellow feeling towards the the the, the lads on the train, but yeah. I could not have the, the the same fellow feelings towards the those same lads who are on the Trans Siberian Railway. Because even though I know that well, yeah, the, there's a group of lads on the yeah. Trans Siberian, yeah, I can't see them. Yeah. So sh- like, it 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 doesn't feel like a binary. Similarly, I might have the fellow feeling towards the lads on the train, but I might not have the fellow feeling towards the Pennsylvania primary or what's happening in Yemen. Like, what? Help, help me understand, like, how, how is this a binary? Because I, I, to, to me, it seems like a spectrum or like, a, yeah, just a, a, a spectrum from I only care about myself to I care about uh, increasing distances that people are away from me. And it sounds like you care about, like, like, for example, Lucia's mom is American. She probably cares about what happens in the Pennsylvania primary. Lucia's dad is not American. He probably doesn't really care about what happens in the Pennsylvania primary. I wouldn't say like one of those is uh, like help. help, help okay, me, help no, no, no. I think you're getting. Like, I where's think the binary here. The okay, the binary is in your in, in a general orientation towards life. I think. Okay. I think viewing yourself. I think viewing oneself. I think the term consumer kind of sums it up, man. I think viewing oneself as a consumer in the world rather than viewing oneself as an a sort of an active maker of the world or like an you know an active participant in the world i think that's kind of like you know that kind of gets at the binary i'm talking about i do think there is like yes like you're you're obviously right that there is a spectrum of like how much care you have for stuff that it doesn't you know affect your life right of course there's a spectrum of that stuff I'm saying I don't care about getting bogged down in like drawing the line in that spectrum okay, sure. or defining yeah, anything. I I am just trying to say that previously, yep. I my my orientation towards the world in general mm. was as this consumer. Yep. Without my, you know, without really any fellow feeling towards, you know, people who you know, towards 
things or people that like you know people that like you know don't directly affect my life okay and there is a binary from like having none of that to having some of that i don't i don't think you had none of that that's the thing because for example even back then you probably had some fellow feeling towards uh, other people who played league of legends even if they weren't necessarily even if you would never interact with them you probably had some fellow feeling towards other designers and developers on twitter even though you never really interact with them, interact with them like I, I, yeah, at the time, you probably didn't didn't really care what happened in the Pennsylvania primary or in the UK general election or what's happening in Yemen, for example. Yep. But you certainly had fellow feeling towards things other than stuff that would be considered politics or that would be considered like global affairs or current affairs or things like that. You had fellow feeling towards the tech news and stuff like that, right? No, no look, I so cared. Which, which I to me ca- doesn't feel like a binary again. I, like, cared about, look, I cared about the tech news. I don't know. I don't think I had any like. On some level, you know, if I met someone who watched Naruto or something, sure. I would feel like, ah, oh, man, certain kinship with. There's, there's a level of kinship. Yeah, a man of culture. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. a man of culture. Yeah. yeah, you know, like there will be those. There things. would be that comradeship that you would feel there's with a someone who watches yeah. Naruto. Yes, but you wouldn't have felt the comradeship with random person in Pennsylvania. But or now even, you feel, mate, or even yeah, I wouldn't have felt that comradeship with. Or I wouldn't have even aspired to feel that comradeship with random person probably in the next street from me okay. who doesn't watch any of the same shows that I do, doesn't have any of the same, you know, has like basically apart from, you know, living near each other, like I, would, I wouldn't have aspired to like have any... Feel that sense of comradeship any, for that person. Yeah, feel okay, cool. some sense of... Yeah. But, you, but you now feel that you're connected by, I don't know, your shared humanity or something like that, and therefore you feel more of a sense of comrade, comradeship towards the, I aspire that to. person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, okay like, that makes I, sense. I can, I that, can buy that, that. That, that is a binary shift. Right. Okay. At the end of the day. Okay, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I've, what I've tried to lay out here is like why I think my views on caring about topics such as history and philosophy and politics why i think that is very important and being being well informed about that is very important where whereas i previously did not think so right that's one thing Mm. um and there's the external reasons of like look you don't want to be the cuck that's that's like being whacked around by all these other guys mm. who are pushing their ideologies and their agendas you need to have your ideology and your agenda and you need to be fighting for it right so that you know that's that's kind of one one reason to care and it, you know if, if if you're not moved by that then if you want to have kids i think you should be moved by the fact that actually someone's going to be guiding these kids ideas don't come out of nowhere do you want them to be you know do you want them to be the cucks being you know bashed bashed around by other by? You know, do, do you want uh, do you want another man's ideas to raise your kid? You know, <laughs> you know sort of like this. Nice. Um, so that you know that's another reason. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, the the final thing is that I've um, yeah I, f- I feel like and you know this I'm, I, this is this is either gonna people are either already gonna be you know, sympathetic to this or they're not. This is not like me trying to, you know, this is not, I'm not making a convincing case here, but I think there is a right way to be human. And I think, again, I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, you know, this is the right amount to care. You should be losing sleep over X and not Y. You know, I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying the right way to be human is to be on the one rather than the zero of like general sort of orientation to the world and, you know, general like caring about people um, as opposed to just like what's you know directly in your in your, in your area. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, I think broadly reasonable. Um, I would want to pin you down on like what specific, what are the specific uh, <coughs> sort of mindset shifts or action points that you d- would take now that you wouldn't have taken back then. Um, but we can talk about that another time. Uh, yeah, just like I. I'm all about like very discussing yeah, the abstract very, and stuff, yeah. but I yeah, must yeah, prefer yeah. it when things are yeah, like yeah, yeah. hold it in my hand. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll have a think and um, maybe do some journaling about like, okay, these are like the ten things where previously, mm. previously I thought this, 
um, you know, just because it was in the zeitgeist or whatever. And now I've come to, you know, believe this or whatever. I think that could be interesting. Nice. Should we end with a little quote or tweet or something like that? I feel like we we we, we had that <coughs> segment at one point. Um, Insight of the week or tweet of the week. Yeah, tweet of the week or highlight of the week or quote of the week or something. Uh, let me see. Yeah, do you want to show? Oh, something? interesting. Uh, I just have a quote that came up on my on my Readwise daily review. Oh yeah. Um, this is from a book called Beyond Wealth by Alexander Green. Of all of the prescriptions for happiness, perhaps the least helpful one is the now fashionable idea that you can defeat the blues by paying attention to yourself. Hardly. The happiest individuals are invariably those whose ordinary, everyday mode of living is being busy and unconcerned with the self. Um, basically, he's implying you should care about things other than yourself, ah. which sounds like what this episode is somewhat been about. I think he's, I think he's getting at something different. I think, I think what he's getting at is that um, yeah, taking like the uh, I think there's this thing at the moment there's a very like inward sort of solipsistic sort of um, thing going around at the moment about um, you know about basically you 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 know you have uh you know you contain multitudes you have you have this like you know kind of gal you know you have this like galaxy within you and like you know you're like exploring that and like you know tending to that or whatever um you know what i mean mm, no really? i think he's i think he's getting at this thing i mean i think there is this kind of there's there's this sort of modern idea of like um the therapeutic self you know we kind of we talked about this a, few, a couple of years ago on the on the pod you know psychological man and all this kind of stuff yeah <laughs> vaguely rings a bell but i feel like we weren't even concrete about that so it's hard <laughs> yeah, for me to remember yeah. these things anyway yeah, let's begin yeah we'll, we'll end the pod there thank you everyone for listening and we'll hopefully see you sometime soon maybe <sighs> even next week goodbye <laughs>